Right, before I show you how to get this depth of field, as you can see, you can see where we are focusing on the objects that are in front of the camera. You can also see where we are focused on the you know, object. You can see the splashback is where we are focusing on the, this particular one as opposed to the dining table. Before we get into all that, there are some theories I want us to get down, right? So the first one I want us to look at is the focal length. First of all, I want you to know something, okay? When the number in this focal length is big, it is referred to as longer focal length when it is smaller, like say 25. Like say, if I put 25 mm here now, you can see it is wider. So they say it is a shorter focal length. Okay, so when this uh, focal length is shorter like this, it makes, it widens the field of view. You see a lot more when it is longer, like 80, like the number I just imputed now, you can see it is narrower. It might also interest you to know that this longer focal length also makes for shallower depth of field. What I mean by shallower depth of field is, is a depth of field that is very blurry. Like when you're looking at it, it is very thick. Okay? Why shorter length, uh, focal length, as you might have guessed, make the depth of field not to be as blurry. All right, enough of the talk. Let's just get right into here. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let me start my interactive render. Okay, I will show you how to turn on the depth of field in your 3ds mask. Okay, all this thing I just said now, I said that to let you know that when you want to get your depth of field in that sweet spot where the 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 blurriness of your depth of field is very sweet. Okay, it has to be a higher focal length. Right, there are categories of focal lengths. I'm not going to get into that. But then in that categories, we have the standard and we have the telephoto lens. Okay, under the focal length. And we also even have the super telephoto lens, right? So for you to get your depth of field to be in that sweet spot, your focal length has to be somewhere in from I don't I, I don't recommend you go below 80. So it has to start from 80 and you can take it as higher as you want. And that is a higher when you look at the categories, you find that the 80 millimeters it, it still falls inside the standard focal length, but then on the higher ups, right? Your standard focal length started from, like, say, I think 35 millimeters to like 85 millimeters. So 80, that has a higher up. Then into the telephoto focal length and then the super telephoto focal length. So when you are in these spots, when your focal length is this high, then you can now start talking about having a nice, you know, depth of field. Now to have a depth of field in your, in your scene. It's not just the focal length that controls it. There are other things that you have to make sure that they are in order, right? The target distance plays a very important role in your depth of field. But then before we get into that, I want to turn on the depth of field so we'll be seeing what it is I'm talking about. So when you make sure that your camera is selected, and I'm selecting mine, then come into the modify tab, Come down here to DOF and motion blur. DOF, DOF means depth of field, right? And then click on enable. Once you click on this enable, it is going to start the depth of field. Now, mind you, I told you that focal length is not the only thing that controls depth of field, right? It is supposed to be active. Trust me, it is active. You can see we are beginning to get some blurriness in this area, right? The next thing that I want us to look at that controls this depth of field, that will make your depth of field very, very, you know, nice, that will push it into that sweet spot, is what we call the f-stop. Okay? F-stop is the measurement of the aperture. If you are familiar with the actual camera we use in real life, aperture is the hole that lets lights into the sensor of the camera. Right now it's at 16, which is why you can see the blurriness, but it's not really showing like that. Okay, so if you want the blurriness to show, you reduce, the lower this number, the high, the shallower the depth of field. Mind you, I told you that when I say shallow depth of field, I mean a depth of field that is very blurry. Okay, yes, a deep depth of field, on the other hand, is the one that is not that blurry. So let's, it's, it's 16 now, let's start with, say, 4. Let's divide it by 4. And then you see what I'm going, I'm telling you. Now, when I divided it by four, you notice that this chair right here and this flower, everything right in front of here becomes very blurry. If you want it to be even more blurry than it is right now, you can come over here and then change it to two. Okay? Or 1.5. You can increase in the, you know, 0.5. Right? Good. Now, mind you, initially when I was explaining these things to you, I told you that the target distance plays a very important role in this depth of field. 
Now you can see that what is being blurred out in this our depth of field that we are doing is everything in the foreground. What if we want the things in the foreground to be in focus while the splashback and everything in the background to be out of focus? That's be in the depth of field, right? That is where this target distance comes into play. Let me shift this into shift this in aside so that you understand what I mean. Make this small as well. Now, when you look at this camera, you see the cone of this camera, how it went, right? Let me move it back so that I will, there's something I want to show you. Now, as I'm moving it back, you are seeing, you see that instead of having a normal triangle here, we're having three lines here, okay? If I should come here and turn off this enable, it goes away. So any object you want to keep in focus have to fall in between these two lines, not this one, this one and that one. So when you are moving your target distance, you have to move it to where the flower. Let's say I want the flower to be in focus amongst other things. You have to see where the flower is. You have to move it into that place. Okay? And when you move it into that place, you can see this light also is, is also there. That's the light and that's the table. Everything that is inside this, our rectangle, will be in focus. As you can see, this flower is in focus while the cabinet and every other thing behind, you know, is out of focus. I hope that is clear now. So when you want to get a very nice depth of field, if you want to get your depth of field in that sweet spot, first of all, you have to make sure that your focal length is really high, say 80 upwards, right? And also you have to ensure that you have enabled your depth of field and then your f-stop should be lower. The lower it is, the shallower your depth of field. When I say shallower depth of field, I mean a depth of field that is very blurry. Then... Your target distance is what you use to determine what is in view and what is not in view. That's not the only way to determine what is, you know, in focus and what is not in focus, but that is the one of the, you know, most realistic way you can do it. Now, this depth of field is nice. If we render it out, it's going to come up, but then we can push it a bit further. We can increase the realism with the use of bokeh. Now, I'm not going to go into the detail of what bokeh is. But then I want to show you what it can do for you and how it can improve the realism of your depth of field. So when you come over here, you're going to see Boca, right? You click on the override. By default, it is going to check on this circular. There's nothing wrong with that. But then I want you to check on custom and then import your own image. Let me open my material library. I want to show you how you can import your own image. So um, first thing first, bring in Corona bitmap and then select the map that you want. Now, you can use any map like this. It can be circular, it can be hexagonal, it can be whatever. You can even browse for it. It's on the internet, right? When you browse for it, you're going to see something like this. You download it, okay? We're going to be using this one for the purpose of this video, okay? I'm going to say open, and it's going to open it. But I want us to quickly crop it, right? So I'll open this. Okay, so I'll just come in here, click on this place. It's going to give me this. I want uh, 700 by 700 mm. Because I want us to just focus on where this thing is. Oh, let's do 800. Okay. So I'll just close this now. Then I will drag this into the no map. You can see this no map next to this, you know, next to this custom. I'll just drag it, drag it into there and say yes as instance. That it should be as instance. Now, when this loads up now, you're going to see some bokeh effects. All right, I want you to notice the difference between the depth of field with bokeh and without bokeh effect. Right, you can see this right here. You can see the bokeh effect. You can see the, you can see kind of bubble of light and cubes. But when I move this thing over, all those things goes away, as you can see. You know, when this render finishes, you can see it. And see, okay, look at the final render of this. After it, we are, it has been done, right? You can see the difference. Without this bokeh effect, it is just going to be a flat blow like this one. You can see flat blow, but with the bokeh effect, it is going to project that image. This image that I just showed you now that we cropped out. This image that we cropped out, it will it will use it and you know, work in the place that we have highlights, right? You can see the bokeh effect making, making all the difference. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
If you did, please give me a like. And if you are watching this video and you have not subscribed yet, if you are new to this channel or you have been watching my video but you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Okay? Your subscription helps me to reach more people. You're not only subscribing, ring the notification bell so you get notified anytime I drop a new video. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.